Outside of the Bible and maybe religious authorities, can we know and be confident that God exists? So many people would say that it's not possible to know or have a reasonable confidence that God exists. So it's okay if you want to believe God exists or that you hope that He exists or you wish that He exists, but it's not possible for you to actually really know and be confident in it. And a lot of Christians would say um, that, that they believe in God because of the Bible. And, but, but I think this is incorrect, and I think the Bible even would indicate for us that this is incorrect. So all throughout Scripture, and I can think of passages in the Psalms and in the New Testament that, um, that would make this point. Like the Psalms talk about how the heavens declare the glory of God, and that it's the fool who says in his heart there is no God. So there is this awareness that God really is there, and you don't need divine revelation to know that, um, to know that particular fact. In Romans 1, Paul talks about that the, the creation around us and the moral law within us speaks to the fact that there is a God. And so what I want to talk about here and now in particular is that moral code or that conscience that's built into us that speaks to the fact that there is a creator God. So th this is, and let me sort of unpack this and then we'll look at a couple of objections to it. So as you reflect on your own moral life and the decisions that you make, we all are aware of the fact that there's been times where we've had a guilty conscience. And that happens because we've done something wrong and we know that we've done something wrong. We know we've violated this certain standard. And, and it's a really odd thing if you think about it because you can do something wrong and no one knows about it, yet you can still be um, or harbor feelings of guilt and shame, etc. And so what is happening to us as individuals is we recognize that there is this standard that's outside of us and above us and has this authority that sort of presses down on us and that we're beholden to that standard. And when we violate that standard, we know that we have and we feel like something is amiss, something's off. So, if, and again, reflecting on this, it's like there's something invisible, something not physical, that's out there that carries an authority over us, and it's this moral standard, it's this law that's out there. And so the question that I think we need to ask as we sort of drill down on this is where does that law come from? Where does that standard come from, and, and what gives it the authority and force that it has in our lives? Because it, it's, it's an objective standard. We know that there are certain things, certain truths that are moral truths, certain rights and wrongs that we're obligated to, to live up to, that, that we must obey. And very simply put, laws require a lawgiver. So if there really is a moral law and a moral code out there in the non-material realm that has authority over us, it requires someone behind that law, giving that law and giving it the authority that it has. And this is really intuitive for us, right? We, we see this in the world around us when there is a law and we're aware of that law. We know it came from somewhere. So anytime we interact with authorities and there's rules or laws involved, we, we know that there's an authority that stands behind that law. And this moral law seems to supersede all of those other laws in that it's, it's very universal and it has this similar weight and uh, binding nature on everyone. And so if there's a law that's immaterial and stands over all human beings and we feel the weight of that law and it has authority in our lives, it must come from someone that's more authoritative than us, that's outside of us, that has access to or authority in the non-physical realm. And that, that very logically and easily points to God. So just as the creation of the universe requires a creator, a moral law requires a moral lawgiver. And most people very easily recognize that this is God. This is a very natural, logical progression for us. 
So uh, on the face of it, this makes sense. My kids, before they can barely understand the concept of God and you know all things religious, um, they they understand this concept very very easily because it's so it comes so natural to them. Now some potential pushback here that someone might say. Uh, most people, even atheists, recognize that hey, if there is an objective moral law, there are certain real truths out there that are right and wrong, and they are objectively true, meaning they're true for all times, all people, all places. Um, if there really are such things, then there must be a lawgiver behind that law, which, which points to God. So most atheists will push back and say, well, really, there's not any objective moral law that that you may think there are, and maybe society has conditioned you, or you've evolved to this or that standard. Um, but, but in reality, there's really no such law. And I think that this is an escape hatch that the atheist uses, um, because they feel the weight of that moral law, and they're looking for a way around it because they see where the conclusion leads to. So hypothetically speaking, yes, we could imagine a scenario where there's really no objective moral law. But when you start dealing with real people in the practical matters of life, people may say that there's no real absolute morality and that everyone can sort of make up their own rules or that society has certain conditions they must you know, adhere to. It won't take very long before these people will betray their real true convictions that there actually is a moral law. So people out there that say, hey, you shouldn't judge. Everyone can sort of craft their own morality. If you start speaking out against certain actions that people have, you will quickly be condemned for judging other people. And these people that are telling you there's no real moral code are actually holding you to a code of judgmentalism, and they think that it's wrong. Um, you could also, um, if someone's interacting with you, you just don't really do this, but um, you could attempt to steal something from them. And immediately what's going to happen, the natural instinct is, hey, you can't do that. And if you press on that question, you say, well, why? It's because it's wrong. And they know that it's not simply an issue of power. So might doesn't make right. So we know that slavery was wrong, um, not because you know, we're some enlightened people or that we had progressed or whatever. We just know instinctively that it's wrong. Just because people in power owned slaves didn't mean that they were right. And so our only way to push back and have more revolutions and, and even many some of the human rights advancements we've had in our society come from the idea that there is an eternal moral law that we are all appealing to. And everybody does it. And when you catch yourself doing it, it's a reminder to you that there is an eternal law and there's a lawgiver behind that who is God. So everyday human beings, when we walk through life, we see this law, we know this law, and we can see that it points to a lawgiver behind it. And it's for this reason that there's no real honest down to the core atheist because everyone recognizes the law and knows in their heart of hearts what is behind it. And for Christians, we can see this law and be confident and know that there is a God who stands behind it, and we see Him most clearly in the Scriptures and as He's revealed Himself in Jesus Christ.